Hello and welcome back to Living History with Ted Goldsboro and today's guests Mrs. Salama and Dr. Reed. We're talking about Narbrook Park, the development of Narbrook Park in Narbrook. Well, we had left off, uh, we're talking about a man named Alexander Shand. Right. At, in talking about Shand, it bears saying that it, it was a very short time frame between the inception of the idea and its carrying out. Within about a year, they had the park plans laid out, and uh, Pope, who had originated that, was leaving the project. Shand took it over and uh, was given the task of grading and laying out the roads and sidewalks and had given a short timeline. He only had 70 days to complete the whole project and uh, or that whole portion of the project, um, which I believe he met. I think he did. He um, did. Now, Mrs. Swamma, you were going to tell us about a horse? I was or? going to yeah. tell you. <laughs> when Shand was 102, he was interviewed and he uh, talks about uh, starting Narbrook Park and talks about the horse that he had, that he found the heaviest, biggest horse he could so that it could uh, lift and uh, move most of the, uh, uh, the, the heavy, swampy stuff that he had to clear out mm -hmm. in order to get Narbrook Park mm -hmm. started. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> I think that I don't know much about clearing swamps, <laughs> but I think one thing that they try to do is dig a channel mm -hmm. so that the oh. water drains into that channel. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a horse and you're trying to pull, I don't know, shovels or whatever, mm -hmm. it's got to right. have good hoofs so that it right. can get into that <laughs> right. marsh. And, <laughs> and it <laughs> did. And it did. <laughs> yes, it did. And uh, I've uh, said to you that I think it's remarkable that in my 74 years of, of being associated with Narbor Park, the depth of the stream, the depth of the embankments, seem to be very good mm -hmm. uh, because in those hundred years it's seldom the stream has overflowed above those embankments. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Shan did a good job of planning with that. I think really he did. did. Mm -hmm. So and it was very qu quick that they, uh, the first house went up in 15? I think yeah, 15. Yeah, I think 15. And that right. was the one that actually faces, the only one that doesn't actually face towards the park, it faces Windsor Avenue. Okay. Um, I, I was given to believe that that's because then the view from the railroad tracks would show this wonderful development and a house of the sort that you might have. You could be home now if you mm -hmm. lived here. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, the picture that you're showing of it is a lovely example where it has the uh, gabled roof, uh, I think it's called the gambrel roof, the Dutch colonial type. They all had porches for outdoor time because in the summer before air conditioning, mm -hmm. that was where you wanted to be. Um, and several other houses went up very quickly. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, they petitioned the borough to install sewers before the houses were in, which I guess at the time was uncommon, um, with the argument that the success of this venture was so paramount to Narber that or it was in Narber's interest to install the sewers and they agreed to on the condition that 12 houses would be built by the time the sewers were in, a condition that we didn't meet. Um, but 12 houses were eventually in within about a year and a half. I had remarked that considering that you started with no money and you had a swamp <laughs> and the mayor of Narber, the Burgess, whose name right. was George Henry. George Henry mm -hmm. um, was interested in trying to improve the community by getting rid of the swamp and putting in these nice houses. And to think that 20-some um, or 30-some people were willing to put up 1000 to $1,100 to $1,600 to put their name in a hat, and that generated Fifty thousand dollars to mm -hmm. to buy the <laughs> land, I guess mm -hmm. from Tolan probably. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a civic. And it didn't stop there. They had deed restrictions. They had to commit to building a house of quality, mm -hmm. which in that time meant spending five thousand dollars on your house, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> have them designed, I think, by architects. Some of them came from pattern books, but which mm -hmm. I believe would also have been architect designed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so chronologically then, uh, in say 1915 about, this mm -hmm. one on mm -hmm. Windsor and Narbrook mm -hmm. Park would have been built, but it's number two Narbrook Park. Mm -hmm. And then a family named Abel, Mr. Abel, and he was an architect, and he mm -hmm. built his house around 1916. Right. Mm -hmm. And number nine was built around 1916, because when we look at those early pictures with the swamp, yes, uh, we can we see, see. The, the, a few houses in there. Right, you're referring to a picture that's taken probably from Conway Avenue, from a house yes, that's probably already yes, existing. Yes. Looking at this development happening where you can see some debris in a swamp in the foreground and number nine, the house that you eventually lived in. And of course, um, why can't I find that when we're <laughs> looking for it here? And All in good time. Yeah. Um, now, in so we had a few houses that we can even see the swamp. Um, and then in 1918, uh, something interesting happened, and, and what was that? Well, we had a, uh, Narberth had a parade in, uh, in Nar well, they came down Windsor Avenue and went into Narbrook Park, mm -hmm. and it was uh, a patriotic fit. Uh, they, uh, it was a program of events of, uh, historic kinds of things that went on in mm -hmm. Narberth. And here we have some pictures. Now, this is not in Narberth Park. This particular one is. Most of them are not. The, these, these are. They're on Windsor or something. Yeah. But yeah. Right. Is this one? Oh, yes. yes. This one is in Narberth yes. Park. I recognize the house yeah. now. And uh, it was to, uh, I think, help drum up some interest in uh, mm -hmm buying houses mm -hmm. in Arbor Park, right. investing money there. Yes. In fact, in one of the pictures you can see um, a model airplane that <laughs> just looks like a joy to ride, um, <laughs> but it's labeled Our Town, which is also the name of the Civic Association's newspaper publication, which makes me think they sort of sponsored it, and of course yes. the Civic Association right. having been the inspiration for the park <laughs> yes. lends to the right. desire to right. build yeah. up interest. Yes. And sometimes Narbrook Park has had mm -hmm. events. Um, right. The Maypole, mm -hmm. right. uh, we, I'm right. reminiscent of Bryn Mawr College, often right. has mm -hmm. had well, that event. We even had a Maypole uh, dance, I'll call it, uh, a couple of years ago yes. at our annual park picnic. <laughs> we had a Maypole set up Great. and had a lot of fun mm -hmm. <laughs> doing a Maypole thing. Yeah. Over the I, years, go ahead. I was just going to say that I think we ought to uh, if we're going to talk about uh, people who built houses in the park, I think we should talk about uh, Anton Woolert. All right, all who, right, uh, all right. Let's do that. Um, there was a, a Danish man named Wallert, W-O-H-L-E-R-T, Anton Wallert, and he was on the Civic Association. He was on their board of directors. And what did he do? Mm -hmm. ladies to help with Narbor Park. Well, he was a nurseryman and uh, of course he built it, he had his own house built, mm -hmm. um, but he also uh, was responsible for some of the trees that were planted in mm -hmm. the park and um, was known at that time uh, for the uh, Japanese uh, Cherries. Cherry trees mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that he uh, that he planted, and um, I'm trying to think. There was a time when Japan made a gift of cherry trees. I forget to whom, uh, but Mr. Wallert was the one who supplied mm -hmm, those. They mm -hmm. didn't come from yes. Japan; they came from Wallert's nursery. Um, many people they, many people say that those trees in the tidal basin of Washington yeah, were a gift from Japan, right. but really they came from Wallert's <laughs> yeah. nursery. Yeah. And, yeah. Japan yeah. made the offer, and Wallert took yeah. the trees. Right. Um, the the stream has a lot of mm -hmm. appeal sure. uh, to Norbrook Parkers. Mm -hmm. um, it go pretty much runs down mm -hmm. through the almost the center of the the park. All the children who have ever lived in the park have played in the stream mm -hmm. and <laughs> got their shoes wet, yeah. done all sorts of things. <laughs> and I would think that would include yeah. you too. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. And there was a bridge. Is a bridge. Yeah. 
Yes, there's a bridge in the center, and you may have shown the original outline of the park that showed sort of a loop-de-loop -loop road, which never actually came to pass. It was actually a single crossing across the stream. And originally the bridge was built of cedar, and of course that required occasional maintenance and replacement of parts. In uh, about 1960, its fourth iteration became cement, and it has stood since. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think right. one of the Narbert Park architects, right. uh, Clarence, Clarence Wilmington, Wilmington. Yes. Uh, was responsible for that concrete bridge. Mm -hmm. And it does save a lot of effort because I remember on park cleanup days and men would often get out and try to repair the old wooden bridge. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember <laughs> yeah. that too. Right. Um, now we're getting down. We only have about a minute before we take another break. But I wanted to mention that the Library of Congress has a website on the Historic American Building Survey, mm -hmm. and there are many pictures of Norbrook Park in those, in the Historic American yeah. Building Survey pictures. So anybody who wants to go online and go to HABS, H-A-B-S, uh, you can see these images of Norbrook Park. Mm -hmm. uh, we've used up our time, and uh, we're very grateful that uh, Dr. Reed and Mrs. Slam are with us. This is Ted Goldsboro with Living History, and we will continue uh, about Narbrook Park in another show.